Ah, uh, you know what? One more time. Ethan Slater, come on, let's go. Come on. Dude, congratulations uh, on this incredible show. Thank you. We're going we're gonna to talk all about it. I want to talk about how you got into it and all that fun stuff. Before we go any further, just how are you doing, man? How is Ethan right now? What's it like over man, there? I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm feeling really good. Yeah. I'm having a blast doing this show eight times a week, and oh it's, like, it's like a total dream come true. I'm really feeling awesome, yeah. and I'm so happy to be here. This is so cool. You're so cool. I, I, you know, you have an incredibly eight shows a week, huh? Yeah. You have one tonight, don't you? Yeah. And you made yeah. time to come hang out with us. Well, of course. Unbelievable. So so exciting. Let's um let, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk, tell me about the beginning. How did you how did you become SpongeBob? How did you find out about the show? How did you get involved? Did you audition? Yeah. Walk me through the very beginning. I want to hear it. Oh, so the very beginning, I was eight years old, and um, no, just <laughs> yeah. but I mean, no, but, let's go but truly all the, all the way that. back. I want to um, know what happened at seven. Yeah, at seven. Uh, at seven, I was sitting in my grandma's uh, living room watching Perfect. Nickelodeon. Got it. And. Uh, um, no, I mean, I, I guess actually it sort of starts when I was a precocious little, you know, four-year-old running around her. singing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, some might call it obnoxious, but, uh, you know, I was just like, I, I always was like a little bit performative and I was just doing school plays and all that. Um, in high school, I did, the, I was involved in the theater department and I did plays in the fall and musicals in the spring. And then, um, what was your first show? You remember? My first show was uh, "Our Country's Good." Okay. Yeah, which was a play. Uh, well, that that was my first high school show. Okay. My first show ever, ever, ever <laughs> was uh, my sister was playing Dorothy in a community theater production of The Wizard of Oz. Very cool. And I played Toto. I was I was four yes. or five. That is the correct response yeah. to that, by the way. <laughs> um, in, in my, if my memory serves, uh, I had one responsibility, and that was to reveal the wizard by pulling a curtain, and um, I tripped or something, and I just pulled down the entire thing, and it collapsed on top of him, and it was a really shining moment. And that's when I thought, I'm gonna do this for a living. <laughs> Very precocious. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. All right, so, um, so okay, so first show, sorry, I yes. derailed you there. No, but please. So you did all that theater. I keep going, keep going. Oh, yeah, so um, fast forward to my sophomore year in college. I went to Vassar College, which was a great experience. I actually went to Vassar with Lily Cooper. I was gonna ask about that's amazing. I know, it, it's like, it, that's been pretty surreal too, because Lily and I, um, we did uh, the skin of our teeth together. Right in college, actually my sophomore year. And then that summer, uh, I started working on SpongeBob, and I'll, I'll get back to that, but um, right after the first workshop of SpongeBob, I was in my first New York show, which was Independence, um, a musical at the Fringe Festival, which was an amazing show, and I was in that with Lily as well. Um, and so we've, she was in a college production, my first New York production, my first Broadway production, which is super cool. The timeline of that's pretty crazy. So you were workshopping SpongeBob yeah. as you were doing these other first New York things. So all of this is kind of going on at once. It was a, it was a really great year. Um, I, I, it just, I, I, it was my first time working in New York. I had done some uh, professional theater in Washington, D.C., some small things here and there, um, which is where I grew up. And um, when, I was in, when I was at Vassar, I decided that I wanted to work over the summer at this theater company that was in Connecticut uh, yeah. doing Shakespeare. And so I applied for this apprenticeship program just so I could work with the composer, Stu. Um, if you're watching, I'm a big fan. Uh, <laughs> who was writing original music for a production of Romeo and Juliet. Just Stu, by the way? Just Stu, yeah. Just Stu. Stu. Oh, it. man. Uh, Passing Strange. He's, he's amazing. Got it. Um, so... Uh, I, I was applying for this apprenticeship program, and you had to audition for it, so I auditioned for it, and they, they asked me to come in for their main stage show, and um, a couple of weeks after that audition, they'd cast me in as Benvolio, and the casting director calls me later and says, hey, we've got this other thing uh, that we think you might be right for. Um, we can't tell you what it is, but we're gonna send you an email and you'll know what it is. Those are the best. Uh, it was great, and I was like, oh, that's, that's really um, mysterious. And so I was in my friend's dorm room, and I was sitting on a beanbag chair, and I was holding a plush doll of SpongeBob, and I was looking across at this uh, poster that he had of all the different faces that SpongeBob makes, like all those like wacky faces. And uh, is this before you've gotten the offer, and you realize that you're about to be asked to be SpongeBob? Yeah, like this I'm is just all just in there. You're just living it. Yeah, in Jewett. That's yeah. the that's the house of that's the house at Vassar that I'm sitting in. Yeah, um, yeah, deep cut. Um, 
But uh, Vassar fans watching everywhere are freaking out yeah, about the Jewett <laughs> reference right now. Yeah, I was actually in Lathrop, so go oh. Lathrop. Um, but I opened up my computer and I like I open up the email and it's called the Untitled Tina Landau Project. So already I'm amped sure. because I've been reading the Viewpoints book in class. And then I open up the sides and it's the scene where Squidward and SpongeBob are watching the sunset, and Squidward thinks that his little buddy neighbor is about to explode. Um, anyone remember that episode? Classic. 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 Yeah. I was like, ah, this looks really familiar. Those lines that Bubble Bert is saying sound a lot like SpongeBob. And that's sort of when it clicked in. Bubble Bert. Yeah. Was that, wait. That was, that was the pseudonym. That's crazy. Our lives could have been, dude, culture as we know it could have yeah. been completely different if Bubble Bert <laughs> was why we all gather around right now. I love that. So, okay, so you get this, you're reading the sides. You got to go in an audition. You got to go yeah, in and read, right? Of course, yeah. It was like the next day. They, they had been looking for a while, so um, it was a pretty rushed process. Yeah. They said, come in the next day. They even let you leave the room? I mean, my God, you're perfect for this, right? Uh, they were, it was awesome, but, I, you know, I made, um, I made one fatal error in that first audition, which also might have been the reason that I got the job, um, which is that I didn't try to do a SpongeBob voice or laugh because I didn't think I had it in my back pocket. I, I, um, it wasn't an impression that I'd done before, and I didn't have time to do something that I was going to be proud of. So uh, I went in, and I basically did the whole thing in my own voice, except maybe a little bit higher pitched. Yeah. Um, and when I laughed, I just sort of chuckled. Um, and Tina's response was awesome. She said, I love what you're doing. Really great. Come back in and do the laugh. It's sort of important. Um, so it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. People care about that. So I, I had two more days, and I worked on it, and I spent a lot of time um, working on the voice and the laugh, and I came in, and I did my best impression. Um, and it was good enough to start, but uh, to be totally honest, it's taken five years of development for me to feel like I'm not doing an impression of Tom Kenny anymore, and I'm not doing, um, you know, sort of a 50% version of it. I'm doing my own thing, and I, and I, um, well, I feel good about that. That's And you should, because that's what, one of my questions that I wanted to ask you was how you've sort of constructed your bubble, Bert, because... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How you, like, here's the thing, because what you've done, you've taken a character that million, I don't know the number, but let's say worldwide people know SpongeBob, right? right. They have a preconceived notion yeah. of who SpongeBob is, what SpongeBob sounds like, and you're not doing an impression. You've taken this character, but and you've changed it just enough that it's yours. It's not an impression of it, but it's still somehow familiar. You've done something amazing. I don't know. Congratulations. I appreciate so that. now, tell us how you did that amazing thing. How did you? <laughs> well, it started when I was eight. Um, yeah, good. No, no, but I, no, I, think, I think the answer to that is that I've had an amazing group of mentors and, and, and teachers and leaders. And, and Tina Landau um, knows how to work with actors. And, um, and I think the thing, the reason that I said that what I did in the audition was both a fatal flaw and potentially the reason that I got it was because that's where it all starts, is the truth of the scene and the emotional core of it. And, and that was a big part of Tina's vision, was, was putting the DNA of the show up on stage, but also having uh, having it be grounded in truth. And so th that was what I did, is that I worked on the impression and I watched a ton of SpongeBob, uh, just as uh, everything that I could find on the internet. Right. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, leading up to each workshop, I watched 100 episodes. And then, I, so I've seen every episode and I've practiced my impression, but then, um, it comes down to sort of throwing it away and, and making sure that it's coming from a real place. Um, yeah. Well done. Thank no, you thank answered. You. That's thank how you did the amazing thing. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, here, here's a, here's a follow-up. Did you at all at any point, or have you since, now this is taken off, uh, talk to the great Tom Kenny, oh. the legend himself? The dude's got like 420-something credits on his IMDb, by the way. He's a legend. He's, he's, a legend. A, he's an absolute legend. Yeah. Have you talked to him at all? Or, or? I've had a couple of amazing opportunities where I've gotten to talk to him. Yeah. He was at the opening in Chicago um, where we showed up wearing pretty much the same thing, um, which was incredible, which is incredible. Uh, and we had a great conversation there. He's been so supportive and really friendly. I got to talk with him at opening night on Broadway, which was super cool, um, letting him know that I watch Rick and Morty every morning. Uh, and um, and I, one of the coolest things was that I, I went to L.A., uh, 
a year ago, um, and I was there for a couple months, and I just happened to be in the Nickelodeon Animation Studios, and one of the producers came down, and she saw me, and she recognized me, and she was like, you have to come say hi to everyone, and I went, and they were recording an episode, uh, and they were like, you should sit in. Uh, and so I sat in for two hours while they recorded the Halloween episode that was just released. I don't know if you guys saw it. It was, so cool. it was awesome. Um, and I got to hang out with the cast, and uh, it was like, it was a total dream come true, That's amongst another cool. dream come true. It was like crazy. It was an inception dream come true. A dream within a dream. Yeah, a dream within a dream. Within. Yeah. Was there ever a moment where it got a little scary for you, like the reality or like the responsibility of like the size of the character that you were taking on and like your SpongeBob? Like, did that ever hit you at a point and you're like, oh my God, I'm SpongeBob? Like, did that ever get scary? Oh. Uh, t uh, y yes, yes, and no. I mean, yes, uh, all the time. Like, yeah. I'll say, let me start with yes. Yes, in that um, every night before I go on stage, um, I'm, I, you know, I hear the narrator's voice, and it's Tom Kenny as the narrator, and um, my heart tightens up, and I and I get really anxious because there's, you know, seventeen hundred people about to watch something that, you know, a lot of them grew up with, and it's really important uh, in a lot of ways. And I and I actually. As silly as it sounds, and I know it does sound silly, I feel like the story that we're telling is important. Like I feel really, no, really I feel is, really though. good That's about it. Part, yeah. yeah, and um, so I do. I do feel sort of the magnitude of that every night, and I have throughout the development. Um, but then once I, my alarm clock goes off in the show, and I sit up straight, like I'm just filled with joy again because uh, it, it's such a fun thing to get to do. And I know that all my friends are around me, and I'm getting to share it, and the energy is amazing. And I'm looking at the Palace Theater. Like the Palace Theater. Yeah. It's, it's great. I will say, though, one of the great things about developing something over five years is that I never knew whether it was going to be seen by real people. And every step of the way, Nickelodeon, to their credit, gave us a speech that was, um, hey, we're not going to do this unless it's worth doing. Like, we're not going to just put on some sort of uh, arena show. We're not going to do anything. We're going to do this show if it brings something new to SpongeBob, yeah. if, if it represents it truthfully while bringing something new, and if it brings something innovative to the stage. Um, and so each step of the way, they, they had a high bar for the next step. And, and that sort of raised the stakes in one way, yeah. but it raised it creatively, and it, and it sort of took away some of the pressure of needing to do this on Broadway right away. It was, it was a, a ramp up, um, and we had to get it right each step. So that was that was pretty cool. The show really does feel like this sort of culmination of, I guess, five years of, of just escalating, of like, we've pulled this off. Let's do it this way. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep trying these other things. Like, everything about it, you're just watching this masterpiece unfold by the time you get there. And it's so much fun and so exciting. One of the little details we haven't gotten to talk about yet, and one of the things I noticed and loved, was your SpongeBob walk that you do. There's this little freaking thing that your hands do <laughs> as you're like m moving around about the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the little wave. <laughs> wow. When did that become a part? When do you start finding the physicality and how do you start building all that and, yeah. and when do you fold that in? So, th so the very first workshop uh, five years ago was just two weeks of movement. Oh. And it was, it was just how do you take these characters and put them on stage without foam costumes? So. Um, that was when we really laid the groundwork for it, and um, and and you know I have to thank and have a shout out to David Newman, who's a choreographer, who's um, who was involved here and there over the past five years, and he would work with me on my lunch breaks, and we would spend hours together figuring out how to create the silhouette and how to move in the silhouette and not feel like I was you know. You know, oh, so great. See, that's classic. But not feel like I was doing that awesome. all the time. Yeah. Um, case in point. Um, but to feel like I was, like, naturally there. Um. <laughs> first of all, you're not the first to do that. Oh. Second of all, it's classic. It's perfect that you did It's that. perfect. That's yeah, we're going to clip that out. We're going to loop it. It's going to be a gift. Oh, amazing. We're never letting that go <laughs> away. Just the reaction. Oh, no. <laughs> no, don't um, worry. Do you, we can get you another beverage if no, you need one. There's, there's actually good. plenty in there's those. plenty in there. Okay. Yeah, between cool. the two of them, we've got, we've got a full cup. We've got a full cup. Yeah. Um, two glasses half full. Got it. Um, you are a delight. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Uh, so you were you were telling us about the choreography, yeah, the wit. Yeah, yeah, he like really uh, helped me walk the walk, and um, 
and it, and it was a lot, literally. literally. And so a lot of it was actually, you know, standing in the mirror and figuring out like, oh, does this look square or does this? Huh. Um, and then and then the next stage of it was, you know, figuring out how to do that casually in yeah. between um, in between moments, and so that it wasn't like a choreographed thing. It was just when I'm SpongeBob, that's what I do. Yeah. So there was a lot of subway walking and. Uh, you know, silly. You're one things. of those people just working on it, just everywhere I love you those go. People, yeah. just like you know, I also had to learn how to do a pop and lock section. Yeah. Uh, so I took a bunch of popping classes, no way. which was which was awesome for you know for four measures. Yeah. Um, I took six months of popping classes, so I would be like standing on the subway, just like popping, and then like walking like this, and, and I'm like <laughs> looking around and hoping that nobody else saw me, and then doing it again. And, you know. There, there is a, a wealth of MTA security footage somewhere of you standing on yeah. a platform. I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone, though. Actors actors do a lot of things on the subway. Oh, yeah, you see it all the time. You see it all the time. There's always somebody on the subway who's singing at full volume or dancing yeah. and just, like, in their zone. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of part of the charm of the city. Free theater. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm really I'm excited at the idea of you learning other things. What, what were other things, or was the popping and locking the big one that you, like, learned for this role that yep. you're like, oh, I'm going to go out and take a class, or I'm going to study this. Yeah. Like, I love the, the whole preparation that went into this. There was a ton of it. And, and I, I like to call it like my SpongeBob University because <laughs> I, I learned so many new skills thanks to the unbelievably talented individuals who have been around throughout the five years. Um, but I, I studied with a contortionist, Jonathan Nosen, no um, which was amazing. Uh, you know, I, I'd always been like a little bit flexible. I was a wrestler in high school, so like I was, I was able to do the splits and do things, but I wasn't able to do them um, in a way that I, that I thought was sustainable. Yeah. And I worked with him on my back bends. I do, you know, full back bends now and splits and various other contortion things. Um, you know, I, I learned to juggle uh, for a scene that never made it on the stage. Um, oh, it was great. It was like. But now you know how to juggle. But now I know how to juggle. You just I got can, that skill now. Yeah, I can juggle some plates. I can flip burgers. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty fun. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, we there, there's some. I mean, I could do this all day. We got to turn over to the audience in a second. But we didn't even get to the music yet in this show, oh, which is incredible. And I, I was reading the playbill beforehand, and I was like, Oh, that's cool, Jonathan Colton. Yeah, that's really badass. Oh, Sarah Bareilles. And I was like, Wait a second. Flaming Lips, John Legend, Brendan Urie, Panic at the Disney, Cindy Lauper, T.I. has a song in here. The guys from Arizona, this soundtrack is ridiculous. The score is amazing. I know. What was what was that like seeing every artist after artist? You're like, oh my god, this this is who's doing the music. This is what I get to work with. There's so many so many different emotions involved yeah. with with realizing you're gonna sing a John Legend song. Um, yeah, it was like well, first of all, they're all fans of the show, so they were like jumping at the bit to write Couldn't these songs. To do it. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, th these people were the first people that they reached out to, basically. Everybody said yes. They were excited to do it. And they did a great job. Like, yeah. They like Amazing. wrote songs that were perfect for the moments in the show, which is also a credit to Tina and Kyle, Kyle Jarrow, who wrote the book, because they they like really... Yeah. There was a woo for Kyle. Woo. Yeah. yeah. Woo, Kyle. Woo, Kyle. Woo, indeed. Um, because, oh. you know, they, they, they explained very clearly what the song needed to be, what it yeah. needed to do, and they've worked with the artists, and they've worked on their own to like make sure that it's... It's it's a musical. It's not a jukebox musical. It's a, it's an original story. But like to um to get to sing a Cindy Lauper song every night, it's like it's just it's just wild. It's just yet another dream you can take. It's another dream. Yeah. yeah, third level. Very very cool. All right, uh, this is. I have one final question before we turn it over to the audience, and I think it's kind of appropriate. Uh, it's out. People are seeing it. People are going nuts yeah. for it. There has been uh, an outpouring, I think, of uh, fan art that's been kind of amazing. You've been reposting some of it. Some amazing fan art's being done. Um, what is it like seeing live action you rendered as a cartoon of your live action cartoon character? Like, how has that been? You want to talk about Inception? Like, yeah. I, well, yeah. It's it's like how I see myself. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, Isn't that cool. It's like. It's so it's so cool. I, the, people are people are incredibly talented. I don't have uh, like I don't have an aptitude for you know visual arts. I, right. I couldn't I couldn't um, draw or paint anything like that. And so it blows my mind that there are these creative takes on our characters that are that are gorgeous and that are that are like emotional and, and they really capture moments in the show, but they also really capture something deeper about it. And, and there are all these varying styles. It's really, it's really heartwarming to see, you know, 10 different takes on a similar scene. Um, there's this incredible one um, that is 
oh, I, I'm blanking on, on who drew it at the moment, and I apologize for that. But there's this incredible picture of Super Sea Star Savior where, um, where Patrick is, you know, with his sardines, and there are all these people around, and everybody looks amazing. But there's this one little detail, which is that uh, Lily, Sandy, and I climb up a pole on the, on the side of the stage, and we watch from above. And in this rendering, it's a palm tree that's hanging over the scene. And there's just something like, there's just something perfect to me about that. It's so simple, um, but it like really captures what, what almost all of these pieces of art capture, which is, um, which is this world of imagination and this DIY sensibility where, where all the things that David Zinn has put on stage are inherently something else too. And there's some, that you just see it, you feel it, um, even if it's not literal. And I, I just love that one. I feel like it's a good example of what, what I've been seeing across the board. It, it's it, so cool. Very, very cool. And there was one little detail I think my wife had picked up on. One of the uh, costumes, and correct me if I'm wrong, but she said she thought they were all rubber gloves. It was like how they made like the scale or the effect of one of the costumes. Yeah. 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 And I, was, I, I, I totally missed it. She caught it. She was like, that thing was amazing. It was just like everything gorgeous. about it. It's, it's all gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. that. That one is, yeah. That's yeah, a pretty that. cool detail. Like There's so much we didn't even get to talk about. The Rube Goldberg devices, all this sort of stuff. But you know what? Uh, I have eaten up enough of your time. You guys are amazing. Let's get some questions. We've got microphones out in the room. First one's going to be right here. Hi. Um, I'm such a huge fan of the show, even though I haven't seen it yet. I'm dying to see it. Yes, come. But, yeah, I'm like, I might take one of my friends next month, actually, if, can, if it works out. But, I can tell. Um, You're going to really like it. <laughs> but um, I was just wondering, what's your favorite song to perform in the show? It's a really good question. It, to be totally honest, it changes weekly. Um, but f for the past month, actually, it's been I Guess I Miss You by John Legend. I, um, it's just like a great moment in the show. It's, uh, it's the realization that though two friends really hurt each other, um, that's not going to ruin their relationship. They still care about each other, and it's deeper than one fight. Um, and I get to sing it, though I don't get to look at him. I get to sing it with one of my real-life best friends, Danny Skinner. And so I get to hear his, he has such a beautiful voice. Um, and I get to hear that first verse, and I'm up, like, you know, 12 feet high, a little bit scared of heights on this cart, just, like, pretending to climb. Um, and, uh, and I hear his voice, and, and, I'm, and I'm just excited to sing my verse. Um, so it's a really beautiful, and it's a beautiful song, and John Legend wrote, it's, yeah, I could talk about it for too long, but I love that song, and I love singing it right now. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, next question is going to come from, I believe, right here. Hi. Or, yeah, okay. Um, I haven't seen the show yet, <laughs> um, but I was wondering what it, how difficult it is to, like, put yourself in the shoes of a character like everyone knows. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's a challenge, but it's a really, it's a really great challenge. It's, um, I mean, the, the good thing about it, the thing that makes it a little easier is that I knew him too in my own way, you know? So like SpongeBob was a part of my life before I was a part of his. Um, but, <laughs> but, but I also think that it, that the responsibility of it is sort of outweighed by the joy I get to share with people who are already in love with this character and in love with this show. And I get to become a part of that. And so um, it's really more of a joy than a challenge. Very cool. Uh, I'm getting a signal. We have time for, uh, I believe, one more question. It's coming from over here. Hi. Um, I got to see the show a few weeks ago, and it was wonderful. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. But uh, you do quite a bit of climbing in it. So much climbing, right? Yeah. So you basically climb like a web of ladders. Yeah. And I wonder, like, I was worried for you. So I was wondering <laughs> what your reaction the first time you saw it. And my wife leaned over and she goes, SpongeBob is jacked. <laughs> when you were like climbing up, I was like, yeah, he's, he's it's good rip. Yeah. It's good lighting. Yeah. Good lighting. Um, <laughs> the first time I saw the web of ladders, oh, besides the mock up, we saw a mock up of the set and I was like, oh, that's going to be something. Um, and then we were in tech in Chicago, and uh, the ladder wall flew in. And they said, all right, we've got half an hour. What do you want to do? Uh, and there was, you know, there was a flying expert there, and, I, and I'm clipped in, just so you all know. Um, but the, the harness doesn't actually really hold me at all until the very end because it's weaved through. Yeah. Uh, so the first time I saw it, my first thought was, um, 
oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, it's like, it's just like a big old jungle gym. They have those webs in the jungle gyms, but I got to like come up with my own course. Um, you know, I think the, I think at some point Tina was like, we'd love for you to be like upside down or something. Um, and so that was the first thing that we did was just flip upside down. But it, it's, um, I'm glad to hear that you were nervous. Uh, and, uh, I don't want to ruin the illusion for anyone. It's incredibly dangerous. Um, but it's, it's so fun. It's like, it, it's great. And it comes at the perfect time in the show where my adrenaline is still going uh, and it gets me right through to, to, to the finale. Yeah. Come see it. Absolutely. And I cannot echo that sentiment enough. Go see this show. I was saying in the green room, hey, God, you did the impossible. You made two New Yorkers smile in the middle of Times Square because... We walked out, man, so filled with joy and just happy and laughing, saying we hadn't had a time like that in a theater in a very long time. Wow. This show's amazing. You guys do amazing work. You're artists. You're athletes. It's unbelievable. I, I cannot sing praise enough. Guys, go check it out. SpongeBob, SquarePants, the Broadway musical. Get your tickets right now and make some noise for Ethan Slater. SpongeBob himself. Come on. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.